We're here at the NRB with our guest, Max Greiner, who is an internationally known artist. And he has works in all 50 states, 80 countries. Billy Graham had one of his sculptures. Our president has the open cross. I think a past pope, and this man is well known. His work is incredible, and we are so blessed to have him with us. And he's a dear friend. Yes, he is. With that, that's great the news. most important. <laughs> and we do have the announce up till now. This is the announcement that we've ever made. Mr. Max Griner, tell us what's happened. <clears throat> well, first, thank you for letting me be on your show. And I love these people. I've known them for <laughs> over 20 years, and uh, and you are the best. Um, you know, and I've been around all the stars of, by the grace of God and Christianity because of my artwork. But you two are the, some of the finest human beings and his kids that I know of. And I just thank you for who you are, what you do, and the way you lift up Jesus. Amen. Because I'm you. proud to know you, and I thank you. Now, we've got big breaking news. Um, two years ago, we were here, and we had a dream to put my number one life-size line of Jew sculpture in Israel as a gift of love from American Christians to the people of Israel. And for two years, we've been trying to make that happen. And the big line, the number one casting, that's 11 feet long and 1,134 pounds has been sitting in a warehouse in Bet Shemesh right outside of Jerusalem waiting for them to receive the gift. Well, this morning, about two or three hours ago, I received an email on my computer from the deputy mayor in Jerusalem with a news release that's approved that's saying they, they will receive it, they appreciate it, and they're placing it in Park Blumfield in Jerusalem between Mount Zion and the King David Hotel and that it will um, be placed uh, very soon. And that's the breaking news and we at all agree we weren't gonna say anything until we got the official permission from Jerusalem. And we got it on the city letterhead and everything this morning. And so you are the first media wow. people to know <laughs> about this wonderful miracle God has worked because we just wanted to bless Israel and it's been kind of hard to do that. <laughs> you know, all we want to do is bless them. And, uh, but, but thanks to uh, you and others, we now want to lift up the word and share it. And, uh, and this gift was made possible by the gifts and donations of others who joined Sherry, my wife, uh, and I uh, to make this gift. And the Foundry Eagle Bronze donated their profits. We donated our profits, and it's about a hundred thousand dollar bronze. So it's a kind of expensive thing. And uh, and then different people. We had uh, Leadership Inc. headed by Jeff Anderson was a foundation 501c3 that allowed us to raise the money, the rest of the money to cast it, get it over there. And then uh, Linda Morris Morris with Dota Yavo Ministry was the first pro-Israel ministry to sow into this project. So she's been helping us. And then there are people like you and universities and ministries and individuals for the last two years that have been trying to make this happen. So I came over to you this morning and I was still kind of shaking. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> Jane, you had to pray for me, calm me down. It's like we I'm, prayed peace yeah, over Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, the, and you know how the enemy is. I mean, you try to do something for God and he Ooh. fights you. And I <laughs> email this morning at 8.30 and then all four of my email servers went down where I couldn't send it out. Like I had this great news and suddenly everything went haywire. And I finally, after two hours, you know, they started getting out. But I mean, it was a battle. It reminded me, you know, of Daniel and when he, the message was sent to him by God. But he said he was withstood by the Prince of Persia. I don't know yes. if I got the Prince of Persia, but I got somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the Prince of Nashville. I don't know. But, <laughs> but all I know is we did ask God to dispatch Michael and even Gable if he wants. And let's get this word out and shout it from the rooftop. So thank you so much for letting us share this wow. wonderful news about this gift. Thank you for letting us. Well, this awesome. yeah. has been a heart's desire of ours yes. to have this kind of an announcement because we all wanted to bless Israel. Yes. And this is one way we have to do it. 
Absolutely. Yes, sir. well, thank you. Well, when is it going to be dedicated? Uh, the dedication we thought was going to be um, the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of June, but this thing going around with the virus right now, um, we don't know if that's going to be moved back, and it was going to be coincide with the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. And, and the mayor, the new mayor of Lyon, new mayor of Jerusalem, who happens to be named Lyon, Moshe Lyon, I um, he had that already was... met. <laughs> yeah, isn't that amazing? So interesting. Yeah, because we've been. Well, trying... you can't make this up. No, can you? God, that's his thumbprint. So the mayor of Jerusalem right now is Moshe Lyon, Leon, I think they say it. And uh, so we don't know at this moment, but it'll be this summer, but it will be installed very soon. So it can get installed and start blessing Israel. And we hope it brings them millions of dollars in tourism. I mean, yes. that's really a blessing to all the people of Israel. And it'll be a symbol of uh, strength and yeah. courage <clears throat> and power yes. and shalom and yeah. all the things. It, it's, it's a different kind of a line sculpture. And, uh, and, and I really want people to be able to look into that face of that line, and I prayed it, that they would see uh, the Messiah of the Jews, that they would see that something in those eyes, something in that face that would yeah. remind them of the Messiah that's predicted in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. Well, I know a lot of prayer has gone on. Yeah, my, the no holes in my knees and my pants <laughs> here from <laughs> And now, you are a man of prayer. <laughs> when you do stuff with God, it's like this. It's a ride. It's like a roller coaster. It uh, is. Thanks to you and hundreds and even thousands of people that have been praying for the last two years that this gift would be made, it's finally been announced today in the city. Amen. And those that sowed into it, I know, are so Amen. excited. Amen. Tell us how the lion came about in the first place. Well, um, you know, you've interviewed me in the past graciously, and, and I've shared about a sculpture, Prayer Garden Vision, that God gave us, and we built the first one curb hill. But back in 2006, we had just received this property on Interstate 10 to build this garden for Jesus, and we cleared the top of the mountain with a bulldozer so we could see the views. And there was this beautiful point that extended out like a peninsula over the city of Kerrville in the interstate. And I was standing out there, and I said, God, this is a great place for a single sculpture. What do you want here? And I believe that still small voice spoke to me and said, I want a Ten Commandments monument here with a big lion on it, Lion of Judah. And I went, oh, man, that would be great, this location. And it was shortly after that that I also said, well, God, if you're going to do that, could you just get one for Israel? Because Israel would be a wonderful place, but I thought, that's impossible. But, but, you know, when you share your dreams, you share your prayers. Nothing you is impossible. Yeah, and you speak it into existence, and then God makes his will happen in our hearts when we ask and when we pray. And so first, Sherry prayed for it to happen, and then others came. And again, Jeff Anderson and Barbara Anderson prayed on this dream, and they said, we'll help you with our foundation, raise the money. And, uh, and then again, uh, Linda Morris and her husband, Bob, uh, they said, we'll be the first donors. And so, uh, and, and you guys have also been some yeah. of the donors yeah, to make this happen. It. And so it's really a, a gift from all of us. It's not a gift to me. It's a gift from the body of Christ to the people of Israel. And, and hopefully they'll see it just like, you know, the Statue of Liberty was given to America right. from France. France. As yeah. a, and it's a symbol of friendship forever. This lion's made of bronze. It's going to be here forever and ever and ever, <laughs> you know. That's wonderful. And, and so, well, it was confirmed, though, wasn't it? Oh yeah. About where that lion would go in the garden. Tell uh, us about yeah, that. I, and I, it, not only was it confirmed was going to go in the garden, I, I, it was also confirmed as soon as I got the idea because I got a phone call from the uh, the stewardship leader of the Church of God, and he said, Max, this uh, did you just get an idea for a Ten Commandments monument? The president of the Church of God just said God spoke to him and said, call that artist. He just got an idea for a Ten Commandments monument. So that confirmed. The idea, and then once it was, you know, it was working. We were hoping it would be in Israel, which was the, and then the end of Jerusalem, the best place. Then we really asked for God to pick the spot, and we had no control over that. That was a city decision. But by the grace of God, uh, Mayor Fleur, and let me pronounce her name right here, um, Fleur Hassan Nahum, I believe. Fleur Hassan Nahum has been graciously working with us to make this happen and uh, and she got with the art committee and Mayor Leon and they have picked this spot in Park Blumfield which 
which I'm told is one that is visited by the citizens of Jerusalem as well as the tourists. And that makes it kind of unique because some of the you know, tourist attractions the natives don't go to. It's like yeah. any town that's got a tourist attraction, you don't go mm -hmm. to it, everybody else goes. And so we think it's gonna be one of the best locations. But it's between Mount Zion yeah. and the King David King Hotel, David is Hotel. that correct? Right, right. Amazing. We shall see <laughs> yep. about it's, the it's dedication this quick. summer. Yeah, well, we'd love to go too. Yeah, well, I, I see the that kind of glory is farming on your face right now. <laughs> Look right here, guys. Right there, a blue, green. God, God loves this guy. He loves her too. <laughs> but, but you didn't put a yes, bunch of glitter did. on this morning, did you? No, God's no. doing that. that see, that's one of the manifestations that's happening with this line I made, and people walk up to it, and they, they get what we believe is the Shekinah or Shekinah glory that farms on them. And it's happening in Kerrville at the garden, but we're praying that God will show off in Israel. He'll heal people, he'll bless people, and he'll even put this glory, which we believe is the same substance that was on Moses when he came down with the Ten Commandments, and it said he shined, he sparkled. Mm -hmm. And so, well, uh, God, let me see that. Well, we're going to talk about that a little later yeah. for skeptics, like the skeptic that came, <laughs> yeah. the ABC Fifth affiliate. Yeah, yeah right, right. But before we get to that, I'd like for you to talk about what Mahesh Shab just said concerning the garden. What do you prophesied over you and Sherry? Okay, well again, you know, the line went into a garden that's 24.5 acres on Interstate 10. And that happened right after God gave us the property. But the way God gave us the property is Sherry and I went to uh, the Cathedral Praise Church, Dr. Bill Hart, in Austin, Texas, on December 9th, 2001. And we just went to hear about a guy that had raised the dead. And we're, you know, our, we're our roots are former Southern Baptists. And so we don't do a lot of that in the Baptist church, <laughs> you know, where you bring in the caskets, lay in the rice. Um, but anyways, we heard about Dr. Mahesh Chapa. So we came to hear him and meet him. And, uh, and we, we, we met him on the way in. We sat down in the church to hear him speak and he's starting to preach. And suddenly he stops and he looks at me and says, where is that artist and his wife stand up? And we don't do that at the Baptist church either, by the way. <laughs> but you call somebody else and have them stand up. But then he spoke a prophetic word that was recorded on video. And he basically said that Sherry and I would be involved in restoring a type of the uh, tabernacle of David. And that God would use us in my art to decorate these tabernacles. And that thousands of people would come to Christ through that. And uh, I mean, we didn't know the guy, he didn't know us, he didn't know our story, but he says this and everybody claps in the charismatic church. And but I, I want you to also mention about the attorney. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you thought, yeah. I don't need yeah, an attorney. Yeah, and all this prophecy was recorded, it's on our Griner website, it's www.maxgrinerart.com, but it's, it's recorded the video. I mean, amazing that we've got a recording of it. Yes. But, but yeah, so he starts to prophesy and he starts off with a sentence that didn't seem, you're getting the glory now, it's forming on yeah. your, your lips. It's forming right there between your nose and your lips. Um, but um, he started by saying, God will be your attorney. And that's not a very good prophecy. <laughs> I mean, that means I'm gonna be sued. But I said, no, that must not be part of the prophecy. He went on then to explain about the garden and people to walk the paths and find God. And, uh, and anyways, then it all came to have start happening and then we got sued, and we got sued in 2008. And sure enough, we needed God as our attorney. And we went through two years of lawsuits. The atheists and the others were against this garden, which presented we the gospel. A huge cross. Yeah, and it's a huge, open, hollow, empty cross. And uh, and the gospel in 77 Bible verses, and a, a cross that garden in Spanish, English, and German. And that was the plan. We announced it in the public, and as soon as we announced it all hell broke loose. And y'all have done stories in the past of the Bible, and that was, you know, 2006 to now, 2010, the cross went up, 2015, we finished it, and, and it's drawing hundreds of thousands of people a year off of the interstate highway from all over the world, and people are being saved by the thousands, people are being healed, people are being empowered by the Holy Spirit, the Charismatics call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm a Baptist, so I just say it's the empowerment. Just want to make people sure they get it. It's 1 Corinthians 12, by the way. Look that up. 1 Corinthians is the supernatural gifts. 
and then people are getting delivered. And 29 people have canceled suicide at that garden that we know about. And so, I mean, it's it's pretty exciting with what God's it doing. It is. And, and so that prophecy was fulfilled. And again, I was pretty suspicious in my early days that prophecy was even still valid. I thought it ended, but no, it doesn't. The Bible says that it continues on, the gifts continue. Amos 3, 7. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. this is a major confirmation. And if you allow me, I'll tell about the $500,000 hawks. Well, that was that? my next question. Okay. Would okay. you share well, how you know, that? You, as I say, so you can share a lot of miracles that God does for us. We can all, and a lot of people say, eh, that ain't real. You didn't really hear him. You, you know, you're not really healed or either, oh, that would have happened anyways. And they discount God's miracles. Yes. We're not supposed to do that. When we get the answer to our prayer, we're supposed to thank him. Yes. Given the benefit of the doubt. Well, anyways, we got one miracle that's really good for atheists and, and non-believers because God had a man hand me five hundred thousand dollars. If I got anybody's attention yet, and five hundred thousand dollars, and his name was Herschel Reed, and he knew about the garden, and he prayed, God, if you want me to give Max Greiner five hundred thousand dollars to buy this land on Interstate Ten to build this sculpture prayer garden for Jesus. Um, I want to open my eyes and look up and see a hawk floating over my head. Herschel opened his eyes, he looked up, and there were almost a dozen Northern Harrier hawks <laughs> floating over his head. Now hawks are rare, you'll see one, you'll maybe see two, mm -hmm. rare to see three, but they were hovering over his head and the rest of us that were praying for this God to give us this land. And it freaked him out, he put out a fleece, he'd never done it before. We didn't know about it, that he was doing this, but he saw the hawks and it scared him to death. It scared him so bad he left the mountain with his two daughters. And uh, the next day he gave me $500,000 to buy that land on Interstate 10 that's actually worth millions, God given us favor. And so that's a major miracle. We got the land, the story's on the internet, and we even had an attorney's wife there, Becky Johns, that had a video camera and she recorded us putting the cross on the ground and claiming it for Jesus. And then a scorpion charged the cross. It's a picture of Satan. My wife Sherry crushed the scorpion with her foot. Then my nephew Sam said, look up in the sky. And suddenly hawks started appearing, not buzzards. And I'm a wildlife guy, I know the difference. Yeah. And they started, and so she videotaped it. So we actually have this miracle on film mm. that caused, and that man, Gershaw, he's a man of God, you yeah. know, and he wasn't going to budge. He already told me he wasn't going to give us a dime unless God said do it. <laughs> <laughs> so God said do it, and he did, and he's just been a tremendous blessing, and, and the miracles have gone on. Uh, I don't know how much time we got, but we well, have. We've got time to talk about these okay. miracles, well, I, I want to talk about the snakes that left. Okay, well, that's that kind of the next thing. So we got the line, we started clearing it, and the Church of Christ Basil McKay, bulldozer contractor, he says, Max, the snakes are leaving the mountain. And I said, what do you mean? He says, the rattlesnakes, they're all going off the top of the hill here down to the interstate, and the Chevrolet dealer, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> going downhill. And I said, what? And this guy's Church of Christ. You know, and I did pray for him for the gifts though, 1 Corinthians yeah. chapter 12. <laughs> and, uh, and sure enough, they saw him leaving. And then the next week, eight days later, they're working with their bulldozers and stuff, and a pure white dove descended onto the land and just stopped in front of their equipment, and they just turned their machines off and stared at this dove. Not a, not a white winged dove, not one of the species that we hunt and stuff. This is a pure white dove. And they just watched it, and, they, and I had to drive in 30 minutes from their house. When I got there, it finally left, and I said, where did it go? And he said, it went over there by where you're gonna put that big cross. And I said, well, did it fly over there? And they said, no, it walked. <laughs> really? <laughs> How many doves do you know that walk, do a lot of walking? <laughs> They're not wow. that many. But, but literally, God, and we claimed it for God. We told the devil to leave. The snakes literally left. And then a, we called the spirit in, and he, a pure white dove landed. I mean, you know, and we saw it in yeah. multiple people. And so since then, we, we knew without a doubt this was God's deal. Yeah. And so we spent all these years trying to do it, raise the money by the grace of God. Sherry and I are the biggest donors, both in cash and then in art, because we believe this is what God told us to do with our life. Just like he told you to do this TV station. When you're sure it's God, you do whatever it takes to get it That's done. That's right. You know? 
and, and so uh, with, with the friends that we have all around the country, the prayer intercessors, thousands of people have donated to make this garden happen. And now the fruit is coming forth, which was salvations, healings, baptisms, water baptisms, and deliverance of all kind of addictions and yeah. abuse things. And it's just amazing. And it's because of the prayers of the saint, the prophecy, and uh, I'm just honored to be a part of it and get to tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> well, the news affiliate that came as a skeptic that really didn't believe any of this, yeah. tell yeah, us what was, happened to him. We, we know when, the, when we got sued, that put it on the front page of newspapers all over America because another cross was going up and the atheists now were attacking it and now we got sued. Associated Press picked it up and so we were getting news coverage all over the United States. So a bad thing happened and then God brought good out of it. It didn't feel too good to me. <laughs> but, but he was using it to have secular media talk about his cross and Jesus. And so one of the TV crews that came out was the San Antonio affiliate with CBS News. And they're hearing about these miracles and people are telling them stuff happening. And the guy is sitting there, reporter, interviewing me, holding the microphone. And I'm telling him about this visible, visible glory dust that forms on this mountain and when we talk about Jesus Christ. And suddenly I look and his hand starts turning golden, like a glitter bottle was just starting to cover his hand as he's interviewing me. And I pointed to his cameraman and I said, come over and get a picture of this. This is the real deal. You're getting to see a miracle live on film right now. And so they, they filmed it. And yeah. they're reporters, well, you know. you've taken a lot of pictures. Yeah. I've yeah. seen a lot yeah. of pictures. Now, well, the thing about that particular story, though, mm -hmm. CBS ran it. It ran it on the affiliates, and it went all over the place. Yeah. But, Did but, it. But then to, to finish, you know, one year I was here with you, and I just got to NRB, and another film crew from Florida named Invicta, they came out to do a documentary, and as they were filming the sculptures, big patches of gold started forming on the eyes of Christ on my divine servant sculpture that where he was washing Peter's feet. Yeah. And they're filming, and this miracle starts happening. And, and it freaks them out, it freaks me out. I come up there, it's about coming to NRB. Mm -hmm. And they said, you gotta come see this when you go to NRB. And so I was stunned. I'd never seen it, size of opium flakes. And they showed me, and, and then I went over to the uh, fisherman, and it was across the net where Christ holds out the fishing net and calls people to follow him. And it covered that. And then I looked down on the Star of David, the Messiah base, and there on the art on the uh, uh, what is it the uh, symbol of the of the Jews the uh, menorah on the menorah it turned gold. And then they said, "Well, let's go look at the other sculptures." And so we went over to the Great Commission, which is the World, the Word, the Bible, and the Rock. And right there, on go ye into the world, mm -hmm. God started covering that, and they wow. got it all on high digital film. Wow, that's awesome. We've been talking to Max Griner, and if you missed the first part, go to YouTube or something and get it, because it is an exciting happening. And I, I don't think we're even touching the miracles that are gonna take place because of what Max and a lot of other people have done. Now, Max, you've got a sculpture in your hand yes, sir. that I really love because I use that Bible right. all you, the time. Yes, sir. And you got the divine servant of Jesus washing Peter's feet on the Bible. That's yes. the one. And so this is the living word where people can see it and then read it. Right. <laughs> and we love it. Now, what do Thank you do you. for a living? Well, um... You the fastest, give I'm an artist, I'm a, I'm a sculptor, I'm a painter, I'm an architect, got a degree in architecture, uh, write, do photography, do a whole bunch of stuff. But you don't do that for a living. Yeah, yeah, and plus I mow grass and uh, have a paper route. <laughs> no, um, God's blessed me. In 1978, my wife Sherry and I, we decided to leave the world of advertising and architecture to pursue a career in art. And we were young and attractive, 
back in the old days. And <laughs> now we're older all these years later. And uh, still uh, attractive. <laughs> she is. So she you is. still have your degree in architecture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I have yeah. a degree in architecture, and now it's God's used it. But, yeah. you know, I got in architecture, and I always thought artists starved. I never knew anybody that lived. Then I got an architect degree and practicing architecture and figured out, God, you know, they can starve too. <laughs> They're not the only ones. And so I said, God, gotta just be an artist. And the Holy Spirit said, go for it. Put out a fleece. Really? I was gonna go get a master's degree in architecture. And he said, no, be my artist. So that's what I did. And in 78, Sherry and I moved to Texas and uh, back to Texas from California and started art making secular stuff, wildlife, nature, landscape, people, things. I didn't know anybody that would buy Christian art, Bob. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't know anybody. There wasn't anybody doing it way back then, 78. And, uh, but, but then God told me to do the divine servant, and I disobeyed. And there were all kind of problems in the economy crash. My wife got a life-threatening illness. My dad got an incurable illness. And then I... I Nothing was working. We were running out of money. We were down out of money. And, and, and finally, I said, God, what was that you wanted to do again? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I finally obeyed, did the small sculpture. It resulted in the big sculpture. And as a matter of fact, uh, Herman Bailey, you're um, on your team. He saw me at the show the first time I showed the small sculpture. And I didn't know who he was. It looked like a wild guy to me, <laughs> one of them wild, charismatic guys. And I was so kind of Baptist. And, uh, but he spoke a prophetic word. He said, this would be beautiful life size. And he prayed for me. And I never dared to believe that I could do a sculpture that big because they're so expensive. And they're, just very, and they're a long time. But his prophecy began, Herman's prophecy allowed me to do the great big one. And so I did the life size and then God took my whole life and flipped it. I prayed for those gifts of the Holy Spirit in July of 89 called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the empowerment, and uh, we started praying for people. They started getting saved, they started getting healed, they started getting baptized, and I mean, that just messed us up, And uh, <laughs> but but it was good, and it was in the book, you know, and then shortly after that, we met you, and so that began a career of art, making Christian art, and God sustained us, and like everybody, we've had the ups and downs, but you know, without a crisis, you don't need any miracles, <laughs> right? No I mean, test, the, no testimony. Yeah, that's right, but it's, it's, it's those moments, and, and God loves a good story. Yeah. And, and so all these years, you and others have prayed for us, and I've got now these compositions that have come from Him, and they're, and they're divine, and they're, and they're great, uh, because they're His. And, and so that's what we've been doing, it's making art, and then we did the garden vision, was now at the latter part of my life, as I get older, and I thought I was through. I mean, and, and then he springs this line of Judah thing on us and said, now I want you to do that. So I don't know what's in the future, but I know it's like, like I told somebody, it doesn't make any difference where you're going as long as you know who you're following. Yes, and that's if you're right. following that's Jesus, important. just follow him. Trust him, go where he says, even if you're not sure. And so that's kind of how we made a living and we've been blessed. And, don't have to pick up very many road kills. We, we've been able to sell art, you know, and uh, we don't even have to shoot bows and arrows as much anymore. Catch fish out of the lake, you know, because God's provided. Amen. Wow. wow. Well, you've got two gardens being built. Tell us about yeah, that. You know, How the did original, those come about? The original vision, and, and Mahesh Chavda spoke to it too, is this wasn't just supposed to be one garden, but multiple gardens, because it's a new way to reach the unchurched lost. And so right now, we have two more gardens that are going in. Uh, they've already broken ground. One is in Minnesota at Owatonna, just south of Minnesota. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Peterson, uh, Tim Peterson, Cherie, uh, are the pastors of this uh, family church, and uh, family Christian church, and they're putting in the garden in Minnesota. And I think they're gonna do half of it uh, indoors, they got a great big giant building because it gets so cold in Minnesota. Yeah. Yes. I was up there the last time and it was colder on Mars. I mean, it was colder in Minnesota than it was on Mars, you know? <laughs> so they're gonna do kind of half and half. But then, and they're also building a second garden, um, uh, Christ Central Ministries, just south of Columbia on 3,000 acres that God south gave Carolina. them. And they're gonna build a great big, uh, garden there just like the one in Kerrville that gets people saved and do do a lot of other things on the property 
to bless the Christian world. And, and they are like a Salvation Army kind of an organization in South Carolina that helps the needy and the poor and just have a wonderful reputation. And they've broken ground on their site, so we now have two more. And if you think about even like the shape of a cross, we got one down in Texas in the central. Now we got one on the east coast, and we got one at the north up in Minnesota. So you can pray for some place like uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, some place out uh, west. San Francisco. <laughs> That'd be a <laughs> good know, place, for, for a good place for another garden. And, and the remarkable thing about these things is, is people come when they see the big art, the big monumental uh, empty cross, the big sculptures, and it's a free tourist attraction. Yeah. And they just pull off by themselves or with their family, and suddenly they find the gospel in multiple languages written in stone. And, and they get saved and healed, and, and it's a surprise. Doesn't take TV, doesn't take radio, doesn't take internet, doesn't even take evangelists or preachers. Yeah. It's the pure Word of God, anointed by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. And then they go in this cross and they pray, and they're transformed. And it's just the most wonderful thing. You remember when you came to Florida? Oh, you bet. I was actually there, I think, twice with you. Yeah, yeah. on the um... trailer. Brought the divine servant on a big trailer. No, not well, that. Not. What? When you, when I called you, and said I think these people want to put in another garden mm -hmm. up at the line of Georgia and Florida. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's why I keep prayer journals. <laughs> <laughs> I now, forget a lot of stuff now. You're writing a book. Yeah, I am writing a book, yes. And what's it called? Well, it's called The Garden. And uh, what I've done, I've had my friends bug me for years, along with the Holy Spirit, my wife. <laughs> and this is kind of a draft of the, the cover. But it's going to be the 14-year story of the garden vision that began with the prophecy of Mahesh Chabda. And because I have documented every day of my life of what God's done in the prayer journals. I have, a, I have the 12 feet long worth of prayer journals. I do it by hand and I put them in there. And, uh, and every day I travel with a little card and I write down all the prayers that I pray for people and they pray for me. They now pray something for me. happened today. <laughs> yeah. This morning. Yeah, I mean, there's Tell us about of stories. that. Yeah, well, yeah, this one just walked into the door a few minutes and go, you, the lady says, uh, you're Max Grinder? And I said, yes, ma'am. Her name is Tina Mann. She said, six years ago, you prayed for me and my daughter. I was in, going through a terrible divorce and some things happening there. And she asked me to pray for a husband, for her daughter, and for her. And I actually remember that because it's pretty unusual. You prayed. For, and she said, Mr. Grant, I want you to know, right after that, I met my future husband. And also my daughter got engaged and she got married and just got two babies, you know. And that, that just happened. So I've got it written in my journal six years ago that I prayed for some blonde-headed lady and her daughter at the NRB convention, and now I can put it in there, and God answered that prayer. And that's the way he is with all of us. He will answer them, but you may need to get a prayer journal because some of this stuff happened so fast and so long ago, the human brain just can't remember all of it. Yeah. Because I got this, I can give him the glory and the credit, and, and yes. in truth. Yeah, Amen. that is so true. You want me to tell you a little bit about, more about the book part yes. of it? Okay, here's what's interesting about this book. It is a 14-year journey um, of what we're doing, but it's going to be a, a written book. It's not going to be a picture book. I thought I was going to do an art book because I'm an artist, and it's a garden of art. But God said, no, I want it to be the story of my people and my kids that have built this. So I've taken these journals, and I get up every morning at 3.30 to about 4.30 in the morning, for the last two years, and I write until about 9 a.m., and I go through these journals, and I've documented all of the people that have prayed and sowed and the miracles, and all of the documentation, and I put that together in a book, and I've just finished the manuscript and sent it to a professional editor in Florida, uh, North Carolina, Donna Hatch, and she emailed me, I opened her email this morning, and she's a professional uh, you know, uh, editor. And she said, Max, I'm getting chill bumps reading your book. <laughs> and I, I said, I think that's good. <laughs> you know, that's this is going to be an amazing story. And the reason it's amazing is God's story. It's kind of like going to yes. be like reading the book of Acts. It's not about Max Griner. It's not even about my art. It's about the God-given 
a prophecy to a man and a woman, they grabbed a hold of it, and then their friends and their prayer and intercessors joined them, and they've done this thing together that really is quite amazing, mm -hmm. but it's because of the body of Christ and people like mm -hmm. you that it exists today. Yes. And so we're just blessed to be a part of it and honored that oh. God would pick us as two of the people he used. Well, I, I want to pray for this man here. Father, I thank you for Max. I thank you for his dedication to you. Seeing all these miracles take place. And Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving. You are the miracle worker. And Lord, we just pray that this is just the beginning. Amen. Yes, Lord. We don't know the future, but you know. And we know the one who holds the future. We thank you, Father. Father. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Amen. thank you. Thank you thank know, I've you. read that book we love several times. And there's no retirement in there. <laughs> you know? I've read it too. And so even though we're getting older, I think God's going to keep using us if we're willing. Amen. And I just thank God for you so and this too. ministry, and I bless your ministry and your lives. Amen. And folks, if you're looking for an honest work that's full of love and integrity, I encourage you to support what these people do because you are amazing, and God is so pleased with you. Please with you. The same way.